Hello and welcome back to Lippers Fund Flows Insight. I'm Matthew Lemieux. We're looking at weekly fund flows for mutual funds and ETFs for the week ended April 17th. And it's really been a, some crazy week in the markets. You know, after we saw Thursday, both the Dow and jo Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 touch new highs. We actually saw a lot of pullback coming after the weekend was over as initial news out of China. They had a lower in the expected GDP as well as their industrial production were low. And then also, as a lot of people are talking about right now, the precipitous drop in gold prices. And it really kind of set the markets downward and set the tone going forward for a little bit of concern. Maybe some investors thought this might be the time we'd see a correction. Other investors maybe were holding pat. And so kind of let's look at see how that really played out in the mutual fund and ETF flows. Actually, if we look at the overall picture, it seems that most investors really weren't too spooked by what we saw in the market. You know, well, there's some definite shifts we'll talk about, but if you look at overall flows for this week, about $3 billion in if you exclude money market funds. Equity funds pulled in about $1.1 billion. Taxable bond funds added about 2.4. Municipals continue to struggle with about 506 million out. And again, money market funds, big outflows, 25.9 billion for the week. So, you know, again, markets were really down. We saw some uh, some big sell-offs, not just in gold, not just in commodities, but also equities. It seems like everyone was somewhat selling. But Overall, for the fund business, we saw inflows, and so equity funds, we'll talk there. If we see equity, $1.1 billion in for the week, this is the 15th consecutive week of inflows for the scoop, but that said, this is the lowest weekly rate that we've seen. So some investors may be just putting their foot on the pedal without really kind of exiting at that point. And that story was really the same if you look at domestic versus non-domestic. Domestic equity funds saw their ninth consecutive week 421 million in, again the lowest over that, that period. Non-domestic sauce is seen 17 consecutive weeks. This week 683 million, but again the lowest we've seen in volume over that, that time period. So investors were continue to allocate money to equity, just really at a slower pace, really kind of taking a pause, which is something I think we were somewhat surprised at because I think if you put a situation like this in over the last couple of years where we kind of see that real tension on the market and the market start to drop, investors really kind of flee to the door. It seems like they had a little bit more patience. If you look at non-domestics, they continue to really be bolstered by investments into a uh, emerging market, at least on the mutual fund side. So let's look at the ETF side, a little bit of a similar story when it comes to overall flows. We saw about $1.6 billion going into equity ETFs. And if you look at the numbers, you can see the big driving factor was EWJ or the iShares Japanese Equity Fund ETF, $1.1 billion into there. You also saw some interest in DXJ, which is the Wisdom Tree Hedge product. So Japan really kind of being uh, uh, the driving force for equity ETF flows. But we also saw flows into PowerShares Triple Q, which was somewhat of a surprise. You know, we've seen the technology sector really kind of downtrodden. And if you look at the bottom of the group, there it is, you know, GLD, IAU. GLD had $2.2 billion out. This is the third largest week of outflows for that product on record. And IAU had just about uh, $450 million out. And that is actually the largest outflow on record for IAU. So again, gold really taking it on the chin. Investors seeing the, the largest one day price drop in history on Monday. And they felt comfortable kind of paring back on some of their exposure through ETFs. So let's go on to the next group, which is taxable bond funds. Taxable bond funds had a pretty decent week, $2.4 billion in inflows. This is its 25th consecutive week of inflows. And you're seeing about $2 billion um, a week on a four week moving average basis. So still relatively strong. If you look at the underlying support under this, really investors are continuing to go into bank load products, floating rate, loan participation, we'll call them $681 million this week. They have about $17.2 billion year to date. And this is really the low that we've seen on 12 weeks. So we're, again, we're seeing a little bit of slowing down of flows, especially for groups that have really been hot like bank loans. The second group is, is treasury-based products. You know, there is definitely some concern that we've seen in the markets with, with the equity markets going down as they have over the last few days. So we actually saw pretty strong inflows into treasury mutual funds, $267 million. This is the largest we've seen in this group since September 2012. So there are some investors looking for a little bit of safety. The last one was International Global. That's usually a pretty uh, consistent group. They brought in about $228 million. Um, so it really kind of was a mix between some risk uh, trying to search for yield in the bank loan, but also some investors felt more comfortable going back towards treasuries. So let's go to the ETF side for taxable bond funds. We saw some of the similar stories there. Taxable ETFs brought in 1.9 billion for the year. But the bigger story was the treasury portion of that. Treasuries actually, uh, treasury related ETFs brought in 720 million 
for the weekend. This was really bolstered on the shoulders of iShares. Short-term Treasury SHV did quite well, $630 million. We also saw some money going into TLT, as well as investors going into PIMCO's total return bond fund, BOND, about $170 million. At the bottom end, we saw outflows out of the investment-grade corporates. Uh, another interesting thing, one of the iShares uh, one to three, or one of the um, the Treasury one to three products actually saw some outflows. But the bigger story was investors were moving towards safety when it came to uh, equity or fixed income ETFs. So we saw a little bit of that move on the mutual fund and ETF side. So a little bit of concern out there, but again, people were still putting money into risk as well, just kind of at a slower pace. So let's go on to the third group, which is going to be municipal debt funds. As I said, municipals had about five hundred and six million dollars out. This is the seventh consecutive week of outflows for municipals. They've really had some pressure on them. Uh, if you look at the breakouts, we saw national munis had about 273 uh, million out, and single states had a 233. What's been interesting is kind of that subset of the national, which has really been the shorter maturity type products or short muni debt. We actually saw $460 million going out of that product. That's the fourth week of outflows for short muni debt, and it's seen about 1.2 billion in outflows over that week. So it seems that if investors are selling out of municipals, they're really preferring those shorter maturity type products. Uh, so some people out there have suggested maybe they're using some of the muni municipal money to uh, finance some tax obligations or other obligations outside of that. So again, short term municipals really uh, uh, pushing the broader group down, but that really means that some investors were actually buying on the net for other products maybe on the longer maturity end. Last group we're going to talk about is money market funds. Once again, a big swing in this group, $25.9 billion. It would be, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be uh, proper to say that this didn't have anything to do with the uh, the tax deadline that just passed. So we think that that had some of the effects on it. But this is the largest weekly outflow for money market funds since August 3rd, 2011. So it was a pretty big number. We also saw a pretty big number a few weeks ago when we saw the corporate tax deadline pass. So I think there was some definite selling due to tax obligations, but also I think some investors uh, really kind of continued to put some money to work. On the institutional side, we saw, uh, saw $22.2 in outflows, and retail money markets we saw 3.7 out. So again, I think a bit of a surprise when you look at the headline numbers and you kind of relate that to what we saw on the market this week. Slower inflows, we're not seeing quite a, the, as, as much volume as we've seen over time, but investors continuing to put money to work with a little bit of it going towards safety. So really going forward, what we're going to be looking at is kind of how the earnings season, I think, really kind of falls out. Uh, you know, yesterday we had some uh, big tech names come out. Microsoft and Google both beat, so they kind of did quite well today. IBM, though, did uh, disappointed earnings, so that was kind of a surprise for some people. Uh, going forward, we're still going to see some big names. I think a lot of people are going to be waiting for Apple's earnings out. That, that stock has continued to be punished. It actually dropped below $400. But if you look at the broader picture, there may be some concern there in earnings because so far I think we've had roughly about 200 companies that have reported earnings and only about 58% of those have beat expectations. So it's kind of right in line with what we saw for the total of the earnings season last quarter. But I think the, where some of the concern was is with revenue. We actually saw uh, but only about 43.9% of companies beating revenue expectations. So that really kind of, depending on how the rest of the earnings season plays out, might have some downward effects on the market. So if you really kind of want to come back and take a look at maybe some of the, the, the deeper numbers, take a deeper dive, you can actually visit our website where we actually have these, these flows numbers. It's www.lipperusfundflows.com. You can take a look there, or you can just go ahead and join us back next week as we review fund flows for the U.S. market. Thank you, and my name is Matthew Lemieux from the Lipper Fund Flows Desk.